All right, guys, welcome back to Fit Body Secrets. This is Coach Cheryl, where my mission is to bring you guys inspiration, education, motivation, and a ton of action steps that you guys can be taking in your own life and in your own fitness journey. And today's episode, I'm going to take a little bit of a break or a little bit of a detour off of the typical nutrition topics today and talk a little bit more about mindset related stuff. Because when it comes down to making changes, it does come down with a decision. It comes down with a decision like, I am no longer going to keep living the way that I am because I don't like where this is taking me. And I want to make these positive changes in my life to get me somewhere else. And that's not always an easy thing to actually apply. It's an easy thing to say, but it's a lot harder to do. And it's where people often will talk about action speaking louder than words, right? And that couldn't be, it, it honestly is the truth that it is a lot easier to say something. It's a lot harder to actually do it. Things always seem a little easier when you first start. And, and that's honestly part of the process. And it's why with all of my clients, they know that I'm not looking for a short-term commitment. I'm looking for something long-term. And it's why my dietary protocols, whatever their goals might be, are something that is going to set them up for success, not just in their fat loss phase, but in their life, in, in the future, in, in the next six, nine, 12, 12 months, on to two years, four years, six years. I want them to know that my goal is to actually have them change thoughts and behaviors, make them value different things, and still keep the things that they do value close at heart, but knowing that they have the empowerment and confidence to be able to change those things. And I'm going to be honest, guys, today's topic, I'm probably going to, it's just going to be one of those flowing topics because it's something that I'm super passionate about. And when I know that I can make an impact on people and they are changing these beliefs about themselves, they are changing the way that they react to things. I feel so happy for them. I'm not happy for me. It's not my doing. It's I've actually gotten through to somebody enough for them to be able to say, you know what? Like today I'm going to make a decision to do something a little bit different. And the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is, is that empowerment right there is the empowerment of being able to say no empowerment of also being able to say yes. But obviously it's, it's honestly, let me just take a second back and just say it's the empowerment of being able to make a choice because everything that we do, whether it's nutrition related, fat loss related, performance related, gym related, habit related, anything, it is an actual choice. For the most part, there are some things that are out of our control, but the things that matter most for our results are usually things that are within our control. And I will get somebody that will backlash this and say, well, I had my food plan, but uh, I forgot my lunch at home and I didn't have anything with me. Surely not in your control that you don't have food with you, but it is in your control to make the right choices wherever you are out and about. And that is a choice that somebody makes, making a decision to do things a little bit differently than you're used to doing, which is one of the topics that I have written down today to talk about. So the first thing that I want to address that is a huge factor when it comes to making changes to your nutrition and it's something that if you are not already on a weight loss journey or a fat loss journey or on a journey to better your health through nutrition is looking at your actual environment. And we often have more than one environment. We typically have our home environment, our work environment, and our play environment. So that might be like gym, office, and home. And some of us have our office and our home being the same. Some of us have the gym and our home being the same. Some of them have all three of those things being the same. And in those environments, there actually might also be some other environmental factors at play or come into factors. So like people that have kids that play sports, now you have the environment of that, the, the soccer field or the volleyball field or whatever that might be. If you are uh, somebody that entertains a lot, maybe you have the environment of you know, hanging out with friends that are socially drinking and things like that. There are a ton of different environments that we're going to be exposed to. Now, we can't always control the environment. We can't always control the people in them, although sometimes I know we wish we could. Um, but we actually can control how we react to our environment and how we act in our environment. And that all comes down to being able to be empowered to make those choices of, I'm going to say yes, I'm going to say no, whatever that might look like to you, wherever you're at in your journey. And I think that there are a lot of feelings that come up when we think about making decisions. And I think the main thing that comes up is this, this thought of like, how is my decision going to affect everybody else? And at the end of the day, it really doesn't. It doesn't. What tends to affect other people is their own guilt about what they're doing. And I say this with the thought of the people that are out there that are like, you know what, I'm really liking how I feel. And this weekend, I actually want to just try and choose healthier options at the restaurant and not indulge in extra drinking and fried foods because I feel really good and I'm seeing this progress and I don't want to do anything to mess that up. And somebody that says, you know what, that's my, my choice today often feels guilty about that because Somebody at the dinner table is like, oh, you're eating healthy. Oh, that's right. You're on that diet plan. And maybe it's because they've seen you do these things in the past, but maybe this is the time where you're like, you know what? 
I'm not going to be that person anymore. I'm going to do this the right fucking way. And you making that decision has now become something that you feel guilty about because somebody else doesn't believe in you or they're looking at their own choices and they're like, well, she's eating healthy. And now she, they're, they're going to make a mockery of you. They're going to make you feel bad about it. So you can't control your environment, but you definitely should feel empowered to be able to speak up for yourself and your own needs in that environment. That is a choice and something that nobody else can take from you. On the flip side of that, if the environment calls for a birthday celebration and you want to say yes to a piece of birthday cake, that is also a choice that you make and that you should feel proud and happy with and confident in and empowered to do. And I, I get a lot of people that feel so guilty because they have a cookie. And what that tends to lead them into is this negative feeling of like, oh, I messed up my diet and now I'm going to have another cookie because I already messed up. So I'm going to have another one. And then it's like, well, since I'm going to not do this ever again, I'm just going to have whatever I want tonight. And that ends up spiraling them into a feeling of just guilt and desperation of, of feeling bad about themselves. And, and now they end up going the opposite direction. So both of those things are a choice, the choice to say no and the choice to say yes. And what I want you guys to get out of this is that you guys should have the confidence to be able to say either of those things with full confidence and conviction that you are making the decision that is best for you in the moment. Now, as a coach, sometimes I have to be the bad guy or the good guy and be like, hey, you're saying yes a little bit too often to get that result. So I have to tell a person that, hey, right now you have to say no to that temporarily a little bit so we can say yes to this goal that you have. And it's finding that balance. So number one thing that I want you guys to get out of this first part of this is that we can't control our environment. We can control how we react to it and our actions in it. And be confident and empowered every time that you do that. And I've mentioned this before to a couple of my clients is I don't know anybody that has ever stuck to their nutrition plan and then been mad at themselves afterwards. Whereas the other people that are like, oh, I went off the, ra I went off the rails and they feel like crap about themselves they never usually feel good. And when it comes down to it, guys, I want you guys to understand that if you are following my protocols, I know that having social meals and drinking is part of the plan. And that is something that I empower all of my clients to do. So don't think that when I say on your nutrition plan, that that's, that does not include having those things built in. It just means that you have to be somewhat structured with them and empowered to be able to do that. And when it comes down to it all, guys, it all comes down to a lot of times those people that we're with are people that have known us for a very long time. And we're so used to following suit with everybody. And when you make that decision to be a little bit different, you stand out and that's not always comfortable, but I'll be honest, that's how you become a leader. And who knows, maybe you inspire two or three other people at that table to be able to, you know, make those positive changes for themselves. Maybe you've now inspired somebody else at the table to order something healthier. You know, and that's where you end up becoming a leader that develops a, a following, a group of people that now support you. And, and I totally get it that sometimes that's really hard to find in a lot of families that other people just don't understand. And, and that is also very difficult that you're always going to kind of be that outlier. And that's OK. You know, I, I'll be honest, I eat the healthiest out of everybody in my family, but my family still loves me unconditionally. And do they know that they're often going to have to make something different for me because I don't eat a lot of the same foods? Absolutely. But it's something that over the years, they have been actually very conditioned to, honestly, it, it, it's something that I'm, I'm very proud of that when I was 19 years old and I, and I made that decision for myself, that at the beginning it was hard, but now over time, it's I feel very supported that they're always there to be like, hey, Cheryl, what do you want to eat tonight? So we can make sure we have that available for you. So you'd be surprised The people that love you and care about you will always be there for you. So number one is controlling yourself and your environment. Number two is going to piggyback onto that one a little bit. And it comes down to choices. And I'm going to be honest. I think that people try and keep too many options. It's, it's hands down why people have a hard time with things like tracking their food, macro counting and things like that, but also why they often have a hard time sticking to a nutrition plan because we're so afraid of making the wrong choice that we don't make a choice. And sometimes the decisions end up making us more tired, stressed, frustrated than just making the wrong one. And it goes down to being empowered to say yes or to say no, but more further is getting ahead of your decisions. So for instance, if you get invited out to dinner on a Thursday afternoon, and you know, you start thinking about saying yes, but then you, instead of just saying yes impulsively, because you're so used to that, 
you're like, um, I actually have Saturday night wedding and I have a Sunday morning brunch. This is going to be my third meal at this week. And I'm really trying to stay dialed in. Can I say no to this social event or can I say yes and, and see where we're going and plan things ahead of time? So it just comes down to having a little bit of an opportunity to think first and think things through. And I'll be honest, you probably could say yes, but it just might mean that you might have to make the choice to have a little bit more of a dialed in meal out on a Thursday night because you have a more important meal out on Wednesday or on, on Saturday. You know, if you have like a wedding to go to on Saturday and you really can't control the food that's going to be available, then the Thursday night dinner at Chili's might be easier for you to just be like, you know what, I'm going to stick to the grilled chicken sandwich because I want to kind of save the, the higher calorie day for that weekend or the, the day that's going to be a little bit more flexible for the weekend. So choices are the worst thing, I think, when it comes to trying to dial in nutri nutrition. You know, like just stick to a plan. It's it's variety. I think that people think that they need variety. I think that they have too much variety. Food choices, all of it. Make a decision and stick to it. And and lack of planning and impulsive decisions kind of go hand in hand. Oftentimes, the people that uh, fail to plan things out also make bad food choices and bad decisions impulsively because they have no plan and they're stressed out and all of these different types of things. And they're just grabbing what's convenient for them. I mean, I can't tell you how many clients I have that, you know, they're so busy at work, they end up skipping meals and then they're, they're hungry and they see the, 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 you know, the little container of M&Ms on the table and they just grab a couple M&Ms. They're not even thinking about it, you know, and it, which comes down to the, the second piece of the, of the choices is like, just not being educated on how to make those quick choices. And that is something that is a skill you learn. It's not something that you know the first week you start dialing this stuff in. It's something that you start to develop because you have planned ahead. Because once you've planned ahead, when you go to Chili's, now the next time that somebody impulsively says, hey, let's go to Chili's or a similar restaurant, you know what you normally get when you're trying to, be, when you're trying to stay on track with things. So that's really the main thing is, is kind of watching that you're not leaving yourself too many options. You're just actually saying, no or saying yes and sticking to it with empowerment and confidence. The next thing that I wrote down is uh, the perceived amount of effort that something is going to require. So, um, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I will put a workout out and somebody either over or underestimates it, right? It's the same thing with nutrition. I, when I, when I start, when I first start off, you know, working with a client, the number one thing that I, I ask for them in week one is just to keep a food journal because I know that that is already going to be hard enough for some people. And if a person's already done that, then I might say, Hey, keep a food journal and watch calorie intake and protein, because I don't want the effort. I want the effort to be on the right marbles and the right things, and then allow it to build on from there. So a lot of times though, people just tend to make things harder than they are likely because they're giving themselves too many choices or too many options and not just making a decision. Um, but also because they start to think about the things that don't really matter. You know, like where it's, it's really easy to build meals. People tend to overthink that, you know, because they're so conditioned to just grabbing something at a fast food restaurant. So they also tend to always find an excuse. And, and this is a common thing that the people that tend to really find something to be too difficult, it's really not that difficult. They just don't want to make that change. It's, it's hard to change. And it all comes down to the mindset of knowing that what's gotten you where you're at right now is not going to get you where you want to be. It's going to get you further into where you're at right now. So if you're slowly gaining weight over the years, you're going to continue to slowly gain weight. If you keep doing those habits, same thing, if you keep yo-yoing your weight back and forth, because you're trying a bunch of things that aren't sticking, you're likely going to keep yo-yoing your weight back and forth for the rest of your life until something else goes wrong. And it ends up just climbing up, which is also not what we want. So make sure that you're not focusing on the things that don't really matter because oftentimes when I see that there is a, a, a perceived feeling of effort that's really high, it's because a person's focusing on too many things at once, focus on the big pieces of things. And you can actually go back and listen to my episode where I talk about my nutrition hierarchy, which is going to be keeping food quality high, then watching calorie and protein intake, then kind of dialing on the macros and the meal timing and all that kind of stuff. So don't think about the things that don't matter as much as the bigger marbles. The number one thing that I'm going to put in, and I would say this is number four, but those are the three main topics, but this is the number one thing that I think comes down to all of these things. And there's two pieces of them. There's, there's two pieces of this. There's two things that people lack that tend to make these three things, environment choices and effort become so much of a detriment to their actual results. And it's lack of confidence. They don't have confidence in themselves to be able to speak up for themselves, to be able to be an advocate for what they want and what they need for their own goals. 
uh, they actually don't have confidence in themselves that when they do want to choose to make the right choices that they're going to be able to enjoy themselves. They they're so hung up on what everybody else is doing and achieving and everybody else's perception of them that they don't have enough confidence to just be who they are. And that's something that is going to be worked through over time. The more you start to develop that ability to be able to say no and to say yes with that empowerment and confidence, that is how you build confidence. It doesn't come from the scale. It doesn't come from you fitting into another size of clothes. It comes from you being empowered to be an advocate and speaking up for yourself. And it's why people become more confident when they lose weight, because they're seeing that all of these things that they're doing, these habits that they're creating are creating results. And it makes them feel good about themselves. It makes them happy. So most people lack confidence. How you build confidence is you start to be an advocate for yourself. And the second thing that I put on here is that there is a lot of people that lack belief, that they look at this perceived effort, these choices, this environmental thing, and they don't believe that change is possible. They actually just don't believe that what they want is ever going to be achievable because they've seen themselves fail over and over and over again. And it just comes down to probably trying a bunch of things the wrong way, focusing on the wrong things and never really getting anywhere because you end up feeling defeated, feeling stressed out, feeling frustrated, you know, and I could totally go into a whole nother episode right now that I have written down that I'm going to talk about next week, you know, about, you know, the whole, not always being in a calorie deficit and always trying to lose weight. Sometimes learning how to eat to be healthy is, is an important part of the process. It's going to actually help you lose weight faster. You know, so there's so many things that go into it, but lack of belief is, is a huge one. So what I want to leave you guys with today is just a little bit of a recap here on three things that you guys can be working on and the two things that you guys need to develop by working on those three things. And so learning how to be a, be in control of yourself, even when you can't control your environment, learning how to be a planner and how to say you have a decision that you've made already before that impulsive decision comes into play. And then how to really learn how to focus your efforts on the right things. And that's something that you actually might need some help with. If you have been kind of like spinning the wheels, trying to figure things out, don't be afraid to reach out to me. Hopefully by dialing in those three things, you're going to be able to develop more confidence and more belief in yourself of what is actually possible. So hopefully this episode was helpful for you guys. If you guys have anything else that you guys want to learn about, uh, anything else that you guys have questions about, please feel free to reach me, reach out to me. There is an episode, uh, I'm sorry, a podcast topic article or podcast, the podcast topic form in my show notes for you guys. If you guys do have specific things that you guys want me to talk about. So until next week, have a great day. Have a great day. (laughs) 